Hey there, Nick with CC Minis here. And today, I'm gonna build this bead bot for build making stuff. I'm going to be building it out of this broken portable lamp thingy. And well, beads. All right, let's do this. First thing we gotta do is rip this puppy apart and get to its juicy plastic innards. Really, who needs to buy model kits anyway? I mean, look at all these tasty bits. Okay, so what exactly are we building today? Well, here, let me show you. This is where I keep the pages for my notepad that tickle my fancy, and I wanna save away for some reason. Ooh, look, bubbles. I posted this drawing way back in April of 2021. On that post, I promised to make Bill a beatbot. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a minute, but never late than never, right? First things first though, we gotta get rid of these peg things. I sanded down the peg holes to get just a bit of a smoother surface. Really, I should have done this to all surfaces, but I forgot. Oops. That probably won't come back to bite me, right? It will. Now it's time to start putting this bot together. This part screwed right back where it's supposed to go, but usually you gotta get a little more creative. Super glue and pixie dust, or I, I mean baking soda, are my go-tos for assembling scratch builds like this. Baking soda is sprinkled liberally onto the joints and it helps the super glue dry faster and with a stronger bond. There are no secrets to scratch building. You just find some parts that look cool and start slapping them together. Like this sweet flashlight lens, which will make for a great eye hole. Ah, darn. Really should have sanded this stuff. Remember to always rub your bits with sandpaper to promote super glue adhesion. Come on, how can you forget? So what are bead bots? Bead bots are a concept from the mind of built making stuff. And well, Bill builds bead bots out of bunches of beads. Some are small, some are tall, and some are bigger than them all. The idea is to use primarily beads to scratch build 28 millimeter scale robots and other miniatures. The build I'm working on now isn't going to be built entirely with beads, but it is heavily inspired by Bill's bead bots. Now with the bulk of the bead bot built, it's time to get started with them legs. Off camera, I added in some chain wire and plastic tubing as a bent up pipe. But this bead bot is still missing something. Oh right, beads. I'm gonna make some legs from beads using speaker wire as an armature. The speaker wire was folded in half and then cut and split to create four equal sized leg wires. I like using this speaker wire here because it lets the legs stay nice and floppy until I glue them into position on the base. For the feet, I'm going to use these claw looking beads. And for the rest of the leg, I'll use some basic two tall donut beads. Once I had the donut beads on the wire, I trimmed off the excess and attached the claw beads with some super glue and accelerant. I decided that the engine would be an energy engine. So I used these rib beads to build up some energy coils that I'll try to make glow with the paint job later, using an OSL technique. I want to take some time to thank a few people. First is my patrons. Thank you so much for all the support and for helping me create these videos. Y'all are the best and I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I also wanted to thank Bill Making Stuff. If you haven't seen his channel yet, you really, really should. His videos are something I look forward to week after week. They always leave me a bit happier than when I started watching, and they are a fantastic source of inspiration for this hobby, and how to make some remarkable YouTube videos. So thank you, Bill, for everything you do. Anyway, with the build completed, I gave it a quick zenithal prime off camera, and now it's time 
to break out the goop. Goop. The goop phase is one of the easiest and most relaxing phases of a scratch build. You just take some texture paints and mediums, give them a good old stir, and slather them all over the model, like butter on a pancake. Games Workshop texture pastes are great for creating a rusty, craggly, cracky texture. An acrylic modeling paste is great for a smooth surface. I use it to fill in gaps where different bits went together. Just make sure you mix it well. Really, really well. Uh, okay, may maybe not that well. <laughs> I, I I don't even know anymore. I'm, I'm sorry you watched that. By the way, for everyone that goes down and hits that like building, I'm adding one more rivet to the next scratch build. Anyway, on to painting. Off screen, I gave the bot another Xenophil Prime to lock in the dried goops. Then I covered all the Xenophil Prime with a nice steel metal color. After that, I got out an orange to make the crackly bits nice and rusty. To add a bit more depth to the rust, I added in a couple drops of burnt umber and sprayed it into the recesses where not as much light would fall. After a quick cleaning of my hairbrush, I got out the hair juice. Hair juice is really easy to make at home. All you need to do is take hairspray and decant it into a container. Then spray it out an airbrush, converting it into hair juice spray, or hairspray for short. Hairspray acts as a chipping medium when you apply paint over it. In this case, I'll use a bit of blue over the main body and some gray over the engine compartment panel. Once the top coat of paint is completely dry, you can re wet the model with water and start to remove chips and sections revealing the layer below. I prefer to use cotton swaps for this, but for smaller chips and dings, I would recommend using a paintbrush or a toothpick. Those tools allow a bit more control when removing the top layer. This little goblin is going to end up staring down the beat button in the final diorama, but it was a bit of a pain to paint on camera due to its super small scale, so just trust me when I say that I painted him like a goblin off camera. Back on the bot, I used a bit of white paint to add in some light freehanded shapes, as well as pre brighten some wires for later. The metal bits were hit with some steel and copper colors. Then I spent a good amount of time highlighting the paint chipping. And then to make them pop even more, I hit the undersides with some black paint. These act as little shadows to the paint chips. And now y'all, it's time for that g g g g g wash wash. Ah, gouache. The best kind of wash that I still can't spell. G A O U G U If you are unfamiliar with gouache wash, I have a full video on it right up here in the corner. But the long and the short of it is that it's a wash that can be re-wetted and removed. Just like oil washes, but without the unwanted vapors and smell of mineral spirits. I apply the gouache wash liberally all over the model. Then I brought out some water, 
wetted some Q-tips and worked the water around. Then use the clean side of the Q-tip to absorb and wipe away the wash where I don't want it. Removing the wash brightens the model back up and it's also an easy way to do some quick dirty edge highlights. Next up I painted the energy coils white. And then I used some of the Pro Acryl transparent line to paint the coals a cool greenish bluish color. This on its own didn't have the exact glowy effect that I was going for, so I added in a bit of white towards the center of the coils where I think they would be glowing the brightest. After looking the model over, I thought that the wash may have darkened it just a bit too much. So I went over all the blue and gray areas again, boosting the overall brightness a bit. And then I went back in to re-highlight the edges and re-darken underneath, giving the stressed paint job a bit more of that pop. After I was happy with the paint job, I glued the bot to the base. Off camera, I hit the bot and the base with some home smashed weathering powders. A bit more on those later. Last thing to do was add the goblin to the base. The model had this sweet sling, so I included some tomatoes to be throwing at the invading bead bot. Uh, I made those out of green stuff. I also painted some splatter marks on the bead bot and added in half a green stuffed tomato to the bot itself. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. Now I gotta go pack this up and ship it overseas to Bill. If you want to see how I brutally made those weathering powders, I recommend you watch that video right up there. By the way, I smush Bill in that one. Till next time y'all, stay healthy and take care.